In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions. We're going to be taking a look at the upcoming pattern as well as some severe weather. We will give, be giving a bit of a tropical update as well. Let's just get straight into things though. And first things first, we're taking a look here at our current conditions. We have some showery activity going on here in the four corner states, kind of the southwest as well. Even into California, we'll have to zoom in and take a look at that. We also have some activity there in Washington that I'm seeing. Uh, we can see that along our east coast and gulf coast, we have some activity. This has been the trend for... I don't even know how long now, maybe a couple of weeks now, we've seen just tons of activity, at least offshore of these regions, if not onshore, almost every single day. So this has been a very active area for a long time now. And when we look at the areas kind of in the Ohio Valley and the Plains as well, we also are seeing activity in here also. So we're seeing activity almost everywhere. Now, we're going to just zoom in and take a look at some of these different regions here. First things first, we're taking a look here at Washington and Oregon here. Where we do have just these isolated showers around. Uh, these are leading towards some lighter rainfall. They are quite isolated at this point, uh, but these could pick up in intensity, so we need to be on the watch out for that as well. Let's just take a look here at uh, kind of the Rockies as well, where we have some of these similar showers developing here. Uh, and I'll actually zoom out further because we have some of these to the south as well. Actually, we'll take a look at that region separately. We'll take a look at the northern Rockies real quickly. And some of the southwest, we see Nevada in there. Seeing some of that lighter to maybe moderate rainfall, but mostly just lighter. In Nevada in through Idaho, Montana, uh, Utah as well into Wyoming. We're seeing just these isolated and light showers going on at this point. And then as we move into the southeast, we see a little bit, or southwest better yet, we see more intense showers, especially in southern Nevada, believe it or not, even into Arizona as well. Maybe even thunderstorms taking place in there, uh, but definitely heavier showers there for areas in this pocket in here. Uh, we're seeing some of those areas uh, kind of just west of Flagstaff, mostly south and north of Las Vegas, although Las Vegas, you probably will get hit with some of this precipitation. Uh, as rare as that is as well, but we're seeing thunderstorms and showers in this region. Even, I always love to highlight this one, this is happening, areas near and south of Los Angeles are seeing some precipitation, maybe some thunderstorms developing down there. Uh, I asked you guys a couple of months ago, like, how often do you guys see thunderstorms? Because there was a thunderstorm that looked like it went straight through Los Angeles, and you guys said it happens maybe two or three or four times a year. Um, so maybe this is the second time this year uh, that we're seeing thunderstorms here in south southwestern California there, just south of Los Angeles. And honestly, these are on their way up towards Los Angeles. So we might see this take place there in L.A. Very interesting. Now, as we move eastward, we see there is some thunderstorm development here, uh, kind of for these regions in here. Showers and thunderstorms, mostly showers for all of these areas in here. Uh, and then all of these pockets up here is where we're seeing a lot of thunderstorm activity. So you get kind of like this. This is where most of the thunderstorms are taking place. Uh, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee. Uh, we see Arkansas as well. We're just seeing some thunderstorms in these areas. Even Michigan also, actually. Uh, we're just seeing these heavy, heavy, heavy showers and even thunderstorms. Now, for the Gulf states here, we see that there is just this thunderstorm activity around for all of these different areas. I would not be surprised to see the, the west coast of Florida here get scraped with some of these thunderstorms that we're seeing in there. Also, Louisiana, we're seeing a lot of thunderstorms taking place there along the coast, uh, mostly to the west of New Orleans, so kind of south-central Louisiana. Um, that's where we're seeing a lot of this activity taking place. And then for the southeast here... We see that the east coast of Florida is probably going to get hit with some of this at some point, but we're seeing also Georgia and South Carolina. You're right in line where we have this line developing here, but it is headed northward here just like this. So my guess is that these areas are just a few hours away from later today, possibly seeing some thunderstorms taking place in this area. So be on the lookout for that as well. And then we see kind of Pennsylvania, a little bit of the Mid-Atlantic, seeing some isolated thunderstorm activity here actually this morning. Pittsburgh all the way eastward through Maryland, uh, West Virginia and Northern Virginia as well, seeing some of this taking place. Uh, we see that there is some showers offshore of the Mid-Atlantic as well here, thunderstorms also. And then uh, usually we see precipitation in the state of Maine every single morning, and that looks to be the case. Some isolated and scattered showers around for Maine which is very interesting, but hardly because it happens almost every day, like I mentioned. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. 
We're going to move on towards the upcoming pattern. We're going to break all of that down, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how I think the tropics are going to pick up over the next 13 days or whatever amount of days we have left in July. Uh, towards the end of July, I expect things to really, really ramp up, and then we're going to break down the severe weather like we always do. Now here we are taking a look at the upcoming precipitation as we work towards this afternoon. We can see a lot of this is onshore of the southeast and the uh, Gulf states as well. We still see some of this activity in here and in here. We're seeing all that still taking place. Let's move towards tomorrow afternoon and we can see a lot more activity here. All of that activity that's in the Ohio Valley and Plains is going to move into the eastern United States. We're going to see a lot of precipitation here Monday headed into Tuesday. It's going to be the 18th for the most part. Uh, we see thunderstorms and showers all over the place. Also, there is some scattered activity here along the kind of north central United States, as you can see. That definitely needs to be watched as well. Let's just take this towards uh, Tuesday the 19th. We still see the southeast seeing some activity here as well as these areas to the north here. Uh, we're seeing just some activity all the way from Montana and North Dakota all the way eastward through into the northeast here. So we're seeing a ton of activity for all those different areas there. Wednesday this is going to be the 20th. We see some activity here for the uh, Gr Great Lakes region and also some for the southeast there. Let's just move this towards Thursday, the 21st. We can see that there is a lot of thunderstorm and shower activity happening here. In the eastern regions of the United States, we're still seeing a lot of this as well. Uh, all the way from New England, southward towards Florida uh, and the, the Gulf states as well for the most part. Friday, the 22nd here, we can see that there is a pocket of thunderstorms and showers taking place there. Also up here uh, near the northeastern United States, but not quite there. It's also mostly in Canada. Saturday, the 23rd, we see some activity here. We also see some activity up here as well and over here um, for kind of the Dakotas and Montana again. So we're seeing some thunderstorms pop up for some different regions. This is the longer range. This one starts to be a little bit less accurate, but we can give can give overall pattern um, guidance. So if, if we see a quieter pattern, I usually tend to believe that more than like, oh, it's raining in Arizona. Uh, take that with a grain of salt, but definitely if it's looking quieter, that's something that these models can really pick up on much further out than a more specific uh, weather forecast, if that makes sense. So for Sunday the 24th, this is kind of the pattern look. Uh, for Monday, we see some activity around for the northeastern United States as well as the mid-Atlantic and even into the plains. We're seeing some of that. Tuesday, we see the southeast picking back up. A lot of the eastern United States actually picking back up. And that's kind of where we close things off. So it does get quieter for a little while. It looks to pick back up in activity uh, there towards the end. And then we're going to be talking about potential tropical impacts for that last five days of July into the first five days of August. So that's when we're really going to need to watch a lot of things like that. Now, let's take a look at the total precipitation real quickly. And as you can see, if you're anywhere in the whites, you're expecting practically no precipitation. Your grades will be a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be about a tenth of an inch to half an inch of precipitation. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches. Your browns will be five to ten inches of precipitation. And we see a lot of that happening for New England as well as offshore of the southeast. Thankfully, we're getting a lot of precipitation up here in the northeast because this area, particularly New York into New England, is seeing a very serious drought right now where rivers are so uh, receded. We're seeing, you know, all sorts of impacts from a serious drought happening up there. If you live there, you can uh, attest to that, depending on where you're at, obviously. But I know that a lot of folks in New York and New England are dealing with very dry conditions for the past month or so. Uh, and I'm really having my fingers crossed for you guys that you guys start to see a lot of precipitation there uh, that can kind of catch you guys back up and hopefully uh, undo the effects that this drought has had on you guys. Um, we also see that offshore of the southeast, we see a lot of this precipitation as well. That's kind of the heaviest two areas that I can see here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at that temperature pattern, then break down that tropical pattern, and then we'll talk about that severe weather. All right, now here's the first day. So this is going to be day one, Sunday, 17th. We see cooler air up here for the northwest as well as a lot of the eastern United States. This won't be the case too long, though. Um, things are going to be pretty uh, standard, I would say. More neutral than anything here for the eastern United States here by day two. Monday the 18th uh, into Tuesday the 19th here. Uh, we also see some cooler air here for the northwest. Warm in between. Everywhere in the reds is going to be above normal temperatures there. 
Now day two to three, which is going to be the 19th through the 20th, Tuesday to Wednesday, uh, we see again above normal temperatures here for the most part, but more neutral than anything still. I mean, lighter yellows for the most part is mostly what's showing up here. We see reds for a lot of different regions as well uh, here. So we see a lot of folks in the West and Central United States dealing with these above normal temperatures. Now, Wednesday the 20th into Thursday the 21st, we see hot from coast to coast here. Uh, really above normal from coast to coast, which is going to lead towards a lot of folks seeing hot temperatures. Now, July 21st through July 22nd, I see some cooler air here for Washington and California. But again, for the most part outside of that, I mean, it is hot from coast to coast outside of just the small areas that are not looking above normal. Uh, now, by Tuesday or Friday the 22nd here, we see cooler air starting to move into the west. This heat is pushing a little bit further east. We'll see if this makes uh, a difference here in the pattern. Finally, we can break this pattern potentially. Six through the, or better yet, the 23rd through the 21st. 24th, my bad, uh, Saturday into Sunday, we see hot from mostly coast to coast, mostly the central United States, dealing with these far above normal temperatures, though. We'll have to watch that closely because that looks intense. But by the time we're reaching the 24th through the 25th of July, we can tell that there's just some cooler air moving into the west in a way that is pushing this heat a little bit further eastward here. Um, definitely, that's having an influence on the pattern, a, a big influence for that matter. Uh, the 25th through the 26th here, we see cooler air mostly for the southwest here, but also, I mean, up and down uh, the west coast here, we're seeing some of this cooler air. Um, and then we see a lot of heat up here for Canada, for the central United States, and more than we've seen for the east for the most part. And then finally, here's Tuesday the 26th into the 27th. Um, we can see some cooler air returning kind of to the eastern United States. We see also the four corner states dealing with some cooler air. Still very hot for the plains, though, some areas in between. This needs to really be watched because these darker reds is going to be about 10 degrees above normal. So let's say your average temperature is 88. You're at 98 degrees now. Let's say you're, uh, you know, 15 degrees above normal. Well, then you're like 103 degrees. So we're talking about very, very hot temperatures here for these areas that already average a very high temperature. We're talking significantly above that very hot average. So... That's why it's so important to talk about. Now, what we're going to do is take a look here at uh, the tropics. Now, all you need to know here, in the green, we see increased probabilities of tropical activity. And in the reds, we see decreased probabilities of tropical activity. Uh, it's like sinking air, rising air type things here. Now, as you can see right now, we have all reds in the Atlantic. And that's why things have really just dried up and slowed down as far as tropical activity. Now, as I just slide this across, this is looking at the 22nd. Look at about the 22nd, Friday the 22nd, in just five days. We see this go from reds all the way to greens in the Atlantic. This means that probably we're going to start to see activity really pick up here. Uh, so the 22nd, uh, we do quiet down eventually, but the 22nd through about the 25th here, we have favorable conditions for tropical development here in the North Atlantic, which is a big change from what we were dealing with. So I think at some point between the 20th and the, and the 31st or whenever the end of July is, I think it's the 31st. Anyway, the end of July, 20th all the way to the end of July, I see much higher probabilities for uh, development than we've had for, for, you know, between the 10th and the 20th here of July. So it's going to need to be watched. We're going to have to probably start talking more about tropics and it's right around the corner, so be prepared for that. Now, what we're gonna do is move on and take a look at that Storm Prediction Center for the severe weather. Now, here's the day one categorical outlook here from the Storm Prediction Center for Sunday, July 17th. And we have three general thunderstorm risk areas, one there for Maine, one there for the Western and North Central United States, and then one there for the Southeastern and Mid-Atlantic and Ohio Valley and portions of the plains of the United States. That's all of those lighter green e regions there. That's where we have a general thunderstorm risk. That's where general thunderstorms are expected, but anything is possible. So make sure to heed every watch, warning, and advisory in there. We have three darker green regions there in the marginal risk areas. Um, that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur there. And then we have two yellow regions there that you can see, one for Missouri, Illinois, and Arkansas, and then one there for Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And that is all where we expect scattered severe weather to be possible in those slight risk regions. 
Now for day two here, we have two general thunderstorm risks um, there in the lighter greens, and that's again where we expect general thunderstorms, but still heat every watch warning and advisory. We have two darker green regions there going on, one for the mid-Atlantic and northeast, and then one there for the north central United States, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then we have our slight risk area there for Montana, North Dakota, and Minnesota, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to occur there in that slight risk region. This is for Monday, July 18th. And then for day three here, on Tuesday, July 19th, we have one pretty large general thunderstorm risk area, again, where you're going to need to still heat every watch warning and advisory, even though uh, severe weather is not necessarily expected. Anything is possible. The darker green region up there for the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley and upper Midwest is going to be our marginal risk area where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then the yellow region there for Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan, that is where we have a slight risk at severe weather, where we expect scattered severe weather to occur. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, no surprise here, we're still at a four out of six. Really, uh, we're in a very transitionary pattern where we're kind of just waiting and waiting for the next big thing. Uh, and I think it's going to be coming here with this upcoming tropical surge. So we're going to have to watch really, really closely for that. Obviously, that's only coming up right around the corner. So tune in daily with us as we're going to talk more about the tropical probabilities. For today's patron, highlighted today, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerla Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnage as well. I would also thank our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Capite, Charles Sinnott, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Coisey also. I'd also thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.